The opening bars of Stars and Stripes Forever, one of the most recognizable marches written by John Philip Sousa, patron saint of marches, scourge of French horn players, and possibly a Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, also known as the March King, although there was another March King in England at the same time. Ahem. <laughs> John Philip Sousa was an American conductor and composer of the late Romantic era known for his patriotic military marches. It is December 1896. John and his wife Jane are vacationing in Europe when John learns some disheartening news. I was in Europe and I got a cablegram that my manager was dead. I was in Italy and I wished to get home as soon as possible. I rushed to Genoa, then to Paris, and to England, and sailed for America. On board the steamer, as I walked miles up and down the deck, Back and forth, a mental band was playing Stars and Stripes forever. Day after day, as I walked, it persisted in crashing into my very soul. In a kind of dreamy way, I used to think over old days at Washington when I was leader of the Marine Band, when we played at all public official functions, and I could see the Stars and Stripes flying from the flagstaff in the grounds of the White House, just as plainly as if I were back there again. Then I began to think of all the countries I had visited, of the foreign people I had met, of the vast difference between America and American people, and other countries and other peoples. And that flag of ours became glorified, and to my imagination, it seemed to be the biggest, grandest flag in the world, and I could not get back under it quick enough. It was in this impatient, fretful state of mind that the inspiration to compose The Stars and Stripes Forever came to me. The Stars and Stripes Forever was first performed on May 14, 1897, and quickly became a staple of the Sousa Band. The Stars and Stripes Forever follows the military march form with an introduction, first strain, second strain, trio, break strain, and final strain. The introduction is four bars long and sets up the first strain. The first strain is the first main melody of the march. When performed, the first strain is repeated before moving on to the second strain. The second strain is the second main melody of the march. When performed, the second strain is also repeated before moving on to the trio. The trio is a more legato and softer melody and features the woodwinds more than the brass sections. Next is the break strain, which is used as a counterpoint to the trio section. It is typically louder and played more marcato, and builds tension for the next section. The final strain is the last main melody of the march and is known for the piccolo solo. After the final strain is played the first time, the music repeats back to the break strain. After the break strain is played a second time, the final strain is repeated. On this repeated final strain, there is an added counter melody in the trombones.
Sousa also wrote lyrics for the Stars and Stripes Forever, although it is not often performed with the lyrics. You're more likely to hear the instrumental version. Although Sousa's lyrics aren't well known, there are many parody lyrics that did become popular. One of them has the line, be kind to your web-footed friends, and another one has the line, three cheers for the red, white, and blue. In 1987, 90 years after Sousa composed the march, the United States Congress passed an act that named the Stars and Stripes Forever as the National March of the United States, and its popularity continues today, being a perennial favorite for patriotic holidays, parades, and 4th of July fireworks displays. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can also click the link to Patreon to find out how you can get some awesome perks for supporting Odd Quartet. Or click on one of the links below to watch another video.